prevent Meghan and Harry. Hopefully Charles realized the dangers of Sussex. Is this a Machiavellian plot by Boris Johnson to unseat Rishi Sunak? Well, I don't think there's any secret that Boris blames Rishi for his downfall, and he thinks that Rishi uh, plotted against him and by resigning at the beginning then forced the other 60 ministers to withdraw their support for Boris. Uh, the trouble is that Boris cannot come to terms with the fact that he lost office, having won his spectacular election victory, or because of his own conduct. It was all his own fault. And he just will not reconcile himself to that reality and that truth. And uh, he has no contrition and doesn't know how to actually rebuild at the moment his popularity. However, there's no doubt that Rishi is playing a very, very strange and I, I think fatal game in these Irish negotiations because the ERG group and the DUP are not being taken into his confidence about what he is doing. And I had dinner last night with a leading member of the ERG group who is frankly puzzled. What is Rishi playing? And he's playing at the moment into the hands not only of the EU, but also of Boris. And that is the problem. He's not a proper politician. And it, uh, he's got, what, three days now to pull the rabbit out of the hat and produce a deal. And at the moment, the thinking is that he doesn't have it. What are the motivations of the subject of your book, Boris Johnson? Is he driven by revenge or a desire to re-enter number 10? I think both. And of course he wants to go back to number 10. He realizes that he made some catastrophic errors. But the problem is that he hasn't got, I think, the parliamentary support to get back into office unless Rishi completely mucks up these negotiations with the EU and also has a rotten, uh, rotten performance in the May elections. The real problem for Boris is that it was Boris who made Keir Starmer electable. He wasn't electable a year ago. It was only because of Boris's conduct that this uh, whole edifice of a Tory supremacy collapsed. And Rishi is not a great politician, and that's being polite. He is allowing Boris the freedom to express his opposition to a deal which is yet not yet announced, and I mean, my belief, not even yet formulated. And that's the problem. Uh, Boris is playing games uh, because Rishi is not in total control. Many fear that the Prime Minister will sell Northern Ireland out to Brussels in this forthcoming deal. Would Brexit be safer in the hands of Boris Johnson? Well, yes and no. Uh, in theory, of course it would be, because although Rishi is a Brexiteer, he isn't a politician who knows how to get the support of the ERG group, let alone hammer a hard deal with Brussels. We've got to see on, when, on Monday what he delivers. The problem is that, of course, there is great sympathy for Boris in the party and across the country. But he is the person who is the architect of his own downfall. And what is to say that he will be able to rebuild the party and, the, and support in the country over the following year? And that is the problem. He didn't, in the end, deliver any of the benefits of Brexit when he was prime minister. And he allowed this Irish situation to perpetuate itself. It should have been resolved long ago. And so that is the problem that Boris has got, that he, he ha doesn't actually offer a solution. Uh, all he offers is resistance and dissent. And uh, you can't build support on negatives. You've got to present a positive, too. As party grassroots threatened to oust a sitting PM due to his eviction from number 10, will this party ever get over Boris Johnson? Uh, evict MPs. Well, I think that um, there is a lot of recrimination and the party does have to rebuild itself. The question is whether it can rebuild itself in the next 12 months. Uh, if Rishi did deliver a great deal on Monday, which the RG group and the DUP supported, then of course there would be a, 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 a groundswell of support for Rishi. That is the that is the $64 question, which no one at the moment can answer because Rishi is playing such a strange game. But of course, this uh, hunt, manhunt, witch hunt against Boris MPs is very unsavory. I think it's a, a mistake for uh, any constituency to remove an MP just because they supported Boris. 
and the opposite too, especially before an election. It's destabilizing and doesn't help anybody. But the party does need new blood. The party needs people who are going to be loyal to whoever is leader. And that is at the moment a questionable commodity. A capacious biography of a Boris Johnson. He has his talents, which are, uh, well adumbrated in your best-selling book, but so does Rishi Sunak. Am I the only person on the planet? That thinks that shares in Rishi Sunak are too low. Given the fact that he has settled the nerves of the financial markets, he looks on target to have inflation within a year. He's very focused on stopping the boats, which is not something that came up in Keir Starmer's speech yesterday. And I just wonder whether there's more to this guy than meets the eye. Well, I, I mean, you could be generous. The problem is this, that he undoubtedly is intelligent and he absorbs a lot of information. The RG group gave him various documents to explain to him the Irish problem, and he read the documents very carefully and was then converted. There's no doubt he was very ignorant about Ireland. It's not part of his hinterland and part of his personal interests, and so he had a lot to learn. The problem is this. He is not a good communicator. He is not a grassroots gutter politician. He is not someone who's actually gone into the heartlands of, of the working class and campaign. And I always think in my long years as a political observer, you've got to judge a prime, prime minister and leader by his cronies. Who has he got around him? And his appointment of James Forsyth, the political editor of The Spectator, as his political strategist, just revealed Rishi Sunak to be very, very weak in his political understanding. And there's no doubt that everyone who goes into Rishi's office at the moment and sees his advisors, there is Henry Newman still, a man who really doesn't command any respect in the Tory party. There's Lord Bew, a historian who really isn't a politician. And he isn't surrounded by people who engender confidence that he understands the challenge over the next year to rebuild the Tory party, expose all the fallacies and, and ludicrous assumptions of what the La a Labour government could do. And that is the problem. He doesn't instill confidence. Uh, the question is whether he can do it over the next few months. And Monday's ERG reaction to the Irish, uh, so-called Irish treaty with the EU will be the first real marker of what Rishi Sunak is made of. Ukraine a year on. Hello for the world, but one of the high points of Boris Johnson's premiership. Absolutely. There's no doubt that in his Churchillian historical mold, he did understand the fundamental challenge to our democracy and to the West. And he led right from the beginning, not only in Europe, but also in America, the importance of that issue. There's no doubt that he scored very heavily on that. And Zelensky rightly credits Boris with having turned Europe from what was a very weak position to strengthen and delivering now the tanks and the rest. And that is to Boris's credit. But the problem is that that doesn't win elections. Uh, of course, he's right, but it doesn't mean he understood that leveling huge sums taxes on the British, uh, not getting to grips with the health service, not getting to grips with education and transport and all the other energy problems, the rest, he missed the domestic agenda. So yes, he was great on foreign issues, the, the key issue of our time, but he was wrong, unfortunately, on so much of the domestic agenda. And that is why the Tories are now being punished, because he, in the end, made Keir Starmer electable. And for that, many people will not forgive him. Meghan Harry and the War Between the Windsors We saw the popular animated comedy show South Park mock the couple last week with a storyline in which they go on chat. Shows on their so-called privacy tour. We want privacy. We want privacy. This couple. They've become a laughing stock, haven't they? Well, thankfully, yes. People have finally realized that what uh, shallow people and uh, adventurers they are, that they are people with little proper credibility. I'm the only person at the moment who I fear doesn't realize what a laughing stock they are is the King of England, uh, who, if we're to believe that he really wants them at, their, at his coronation, needs to have his head examined. I mean, they're the last people who should be coming to London in May for that very, very important occasion because they would absolutely undermine the solemnity and the importance of the coronation. So thankfully, 
the uh, the Sussexes are shooting themselves in the foot and in the head and everywhere else and making themselves our laughing stock and being absolutely now exposed for what they really are, which money is money grabbing uh, attention seekers. But I just hope that King Charles realizes they're not welcome in Britain and they're going to do him no good at all.